All right, welcome back everybody. This lesson is going to cover how to divide rational numbers. And rational numbers can be integers, they can be fractions, they can be decimals, but we're just going to basically talk about positive and negative sign numbers. You know, they have a plus sign or a negative sign in front of it. Now, one thing, if you've already done the lesson on multiplying rational numbers, you might notice that a lot of these rules are the same, if not all the rules are the same. The quotient of different signs is going to be negative. The quotient. So if you divide a negative times a positive, or a positive times a negative, it's going to come out to be negative. Now, the commutative property does not work with division, right? That's important. You know, changing the order of a division problem does change the quotient, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So our first example here is we've got 28 divided by negative 7, and we want to know what that equals. Well, 28, this is a positive number, and 7 is negative. A positive divided by negative is going to be negative. So 28 divided by 7 is 4, and then we know it's going to be negative 4. So that's what you have, so negative 4 right there. Now this example right here is just to show you that changing the order of division problem does change the outcome. You know, doing 28 divided by 7 is not the same thing as 7 divided by 28. When you actually do 7 divided by 28, that's not 4. It doesn't work the other way around. If you actually use your calculator on that, or if you do another type of arithmetic, maybe fractions, you're going to notice that you're going to get negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth, or, especially if you use your calculator, you might have gotten a decimal. Negative 0.25, or negative 25 hundredths. So definitely not the same, right? That is definitely not the same. These are not the same numbers. I mean, they both have a 4 in it, but there's a definite difference between negative 4 and negative 1 fourth. And then just to kind of switch things around a little bit, uh, sometimes division is written literally as a fraction, right? And a fraction really is a division problem. It just means top number divided by the bottom number. So you're going to do 51, right, divided by negative 3. Top divided by the bottom. So 51, now this is a positive divided by a negative. So that is going to come out negative. And then 51 divided by 3 is 17. So there's your solution there for 51 divided by negative 3. Now the second rule is the same as the second rule for multiplying. The second rule is that the quotient of same signs is going to be always positive. So positive divided by positive and negative divided by negative. It doesn't matter how you do it. Both of those answers is going to be positive. Both ways. They're both going to be positive. Now this example right here, we're just dividing a negative and we're dividing that by another negative. Negative 85 divided by negative 5 is going to be positive 15. And again, you don't need that positive sign there. I'm just doing that just to make it clear that our answer is positive. Okay, now hopefully this doesn't throw you off too much, but this is called a complex fraction. Now a complex fraction is just where the numerator or the denominator are fractions, or both are fractions. It doesn't have to be both. But in this case, we have the numerator. In the numerator is a fraction, and in the denominator, a fraction. And that's what that is. So a complex fraction, as long as you know what a fraction is, a fraction is division, you're good. So here's the deal. We have a negative divided by that vinculum right there is division bar divided by negative. Now we know that that's going to be positive. So let's not even worry about the negatives anymore. Let's just worry about the math. Let's worry about the arithmetic. So you got 6 fifteenths top divided by the bottom, the denominator, 3 fifths. So 6 fifteenths divided by 3 fifths. So 6 fifteenths times 5 thirds. Now make sure you change that to multiplication, and then you find the reciprocal of the second fraction. At this point, you could probably do some cross-canceling if you want. 15 and 5 both can be divided by 5, so that turns into a 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 6 and 3 can both be divided by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 divided by itself is 1. And then if we just multiply left to right, we're going to do 2 times 1 for the top, and then 3 times 1 on the bottom, which gives us 2 thirds. And that's all we have to do. So that came out to two-thirds. 
Now, just like with multiplication, there's going to be some special situations, especially when zero is involved. And let's kind of make sure we know what to do when those zeros are in there. Now, in all these examples here, you'll notice that there's a zero first, right? So that means that your dividend is zero. Like if I were to write this out as a basic division problem, it would look like this. It would look like zero divided by negative three. This would be zero divided by 19. This would be zero divided by negative 2.9. But the thing that I'm trying to show you is that that number is the dividend. That's called the dividend. That's the number you're dividing into. And when zero is a dividend, some people get caught up on this and they're like, oh, you can't do that. And there is some instances when, you, when you're dividing either by zero or into zero when there's no solution. But this is not one of them. This actually does have a solution. The answer to all of these is zero. So when you divide the dividend, when the dividend is zero, and the divisor, that's the number you're dividing by, when the divisor is a non-zero number, yeah, you're gonna get zero every single time. Doesn't matter if it's a fraction or a decimal. Oops, I just, I just noticed I wrote that wrong. That should have been zero divided by one half, which again, that's an ugly way to do it, but still. Now, as expected, you probably know what's gonna happen here. In this example, all the dividends, all the numbers that we're dividing by are non-zero numbers, but the divisor, that's the number you divide by, the divisor is zero. So if I were to write this out as a division problem like this, it'd be eight divided by zero. This would be 15 divided by zero. This would be negative 36 divided by zero. So when you divide by zero, that's a huge deal in mathematics. What that comes out to is no solution. No solution, it's also called undefined. That's another way to state that answer. But that is not to be confused with zero. That is not the same thing as zero. Some people say, well, isn't zero no solution? No, zero is actually a solution. Like I said, zero, you can have zero dollars in your bank account. You can score zero points in a game, but you cannot divide by zero. That is not the same thing. So when you divide by zero, when the divisor is zero, you have to write no solution. Another way to write that is as a null set or empty set. You can sometimes write that symbol. But every time you divide by zero, it is always going to be undefined or no solution. But like I said, don't confuse that with zero. Zero is not the same thing as no solution. Zero is an actual solution. It's an actual number. It's a whole number. Okay, so that does your lesson on dividing rational numbers. Hopefully you understood this okay. And please make sure you do the practice problems that accompany this lesson. All right, everyone have a great day. Take care, see you later.